before you decide to go exclusively with someone and then have intercourse. Because you can get, even with a condom, you can get a lot of stuff. Like that only covers a little part of things. So when two people first start dating, what's the best way to have the conversation about safe sex? Obviously it's imperative, especially in the times that we live in and um, you hear a lot of scary news about STDs on the rise and that they're drug resistant and it's enough to make you maybe stay in a marriage where you're not having sex. <laughs> but if you're back out there or if you're starting a new relationship, I think it really depends on the two individual people. And I think that there are a lot of different ways to handle it. Um, you, you hope that if you are individual as couples, I think that some couples find it very easy to speak with one another quite intimately right away. I think that there can be shame from past relationships. I think that, you know, you want, when your hormones are fired up and you're excited to have sex with someone new, you often um, want to please them and you want to be pleasing. And having the conversation can be quite nerve wracking. I think it's one of the most nerve wracking things, even if you're a doctor or a lawyer or you know, you're 20, 30, 40, sometimes it doesn't get easier. But I think there are ways to handle it. I think that knowing that you both want to be having sex, you know, I think that um, can maybe relax you a bit and maybe make it easier to start speaking about it. I don't know why in this modern age you couldn't send an email. I don't know if you have to have this conversation <laughs> in person. Um, I would tend to think that I would, but uh, I think that you can communicate about a lot of things in writing that you might not be able to communicate in person. And I think that the point is to have it and to have it truthfully and to know that once you've had it, um, then the fun's gonna begin. It's imperative in this day and age to talk about safe sex. And my clients are coming out of long-term marriages often and back into the uh, dating world haven't had that conversation maybe ever. So it's all new territory. And to come at it in an honest way, uh, adult way, the best way you can, right. you know, just come from where you are. And, uh, and then once you've overcome this, um, anxiety provoking conversation you get to talk about condoms and yes. often <laughs> women are saying these days that men are leaving it to them mm -hmm. that they are the ones that are expected to not only understand condom and condom purchasing but also make the purchases um, i know that in my industry obviously i have a lot of experience about condoms and the biggest thing um, I find is that people aren't taught how to choose condoms. They know that they're supposed to use condoms, but then the first experience they ever have with a condom, which is likely a free condom from a clinic or a high school or okay. a bar, is not a high quality condom, nor is it a condom that necessarily fits them. And so then their entire expectation with condoms are that they slip off or that they're too tight or that they feel like a paper bag and they have no idea that it can be better when really pleasure should be the barometer for choosing condoms and if you don't enjoy your condom then you have not found the right condom for you. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a lot of advice on my website about how to talk about your sexual history with a possible sex partner, uh, to talk about what your personal boundaries are. Uh, and especially for women, our boundaries change every time we make love with someone. So, you know, hey, we're gonna go out afterward and uh, I don't want you to mess up my hair and my makeup because we're gonna go right to dinner. <laughs> or you can trash me because we're just gonna go for it. You know, like there's a lot of things that you can communicate uh, with a potential partner. So understanding what your sexual boundaries are, understanding what your safe sex plan is. For example, uh, you may have the kind of a safe sex plan where you don't have intercourse or oral, no fluid exchange beyond kissing with a partner until you're exclusive. So no lips and mouth here, just here. And uh, that's a really safe way to have a lot of sex partners if you're dating around before you decide to go exclusively with someone and then have intercourse. Because you can get, even with a condom, you can get a lot of stuff. Like that only covers a little part of things, I right? I love what you just said, actually. And that's such an important part. It's not just 
a conversation about do you have herpes or who was your last partner. That's your sexual it's an history. entire conversation around what pleases you, yeah. what makes you feel safe, what maybe you don't want to do. And when you open it up to that entire conversation, I think that that's incredibly hot. You know, that reminds me of uh, a long time ago, 40 something years ago, I was a celibate monk. And I started my career as a relationship expert first by teaching spiritual sex. And having been celibate for nine years, uh, after being very sexually active as a teenager, I was now making up for lost time. So I would travel around meeting women and I would explain, you know, I'm making up for lost time and also I've been a monk and teach me about your body. Uh, and I had all these women telling me what they liked and what they didn't like and show me things. And then I could teach a whole course based on that. <laughs> and I wrote my book, Mars, Venus in the Bedroom. But that was my first beginning, which was teaching men what women really like and what women understand what men really like and opening up the conversation so we can talk about it. It's most people just, there's so much shame around it, embarrassment around it, of saying the wrong thing or whatever, is to be very light about it and direct about it, just very casual and easy. It's just like, wow, you know, you're really beautiful. And, you know, if we had sex, what would you like? And just sit there and just let it be silent. Let, let that just sit down and kind of go, oh, we're having a conversation about sex. Not that we have to have sex now, but gosh, if we had sex, what would it be like? What would what were the things that you remember that are so wonderful about sex? And you can hold her hand too while she's talking, just to, you know, holding her hand. I used to read women's palms as kind of a nice thing. Just holding their hand, looking at, oh, great lifeline, big heart. Oh my gosh, what a big heart. You are very sexual, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> so just toss in a few things like that, make it John safe and private. Uh, yeah. the the <laughs> the I'll tell you what, you've heard it here. <laughs> if you're watching and you are confused about what to do because you want to go out there and have sex with people and you don't know how to do it, this panel has said it all. Safe sex is where it's at. It's imperative to have that conversation in today's modern age. Whether you're 15 and watching this or you're 95, you have to have a safe sex conversation. Lucky Bloke has lots of options. Mars and Venus on the Bedroom gives lots of advice. These guys have great advice too, so check it out.